All right, once again, everyone, welcome to the Six Oasis Workshop. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about front end and React in depth this time, covering some concepts that uh, we didn't cover last time, but are really important towards in your development journey. As mentioned today, we have Arvin and Sam joining us who are gonna be sharing some of their own experience in development and talking to us about React. Um, if you guys could give a little introduction to yourselves, maybe a fun fact. Yeah, hey guys, how's it going? Like Chris said, I'm Arvind. I am uh, one of the mentors here at Oasis. And yeah, that photo is actually me, just several months old. Hey guys, I'm Sam. Uh, as Chris said, I'm the Oasis uh, director, you know, lovingly called Joe, and, um, and also a mentor for one of the groups in the Accelerator. Um, I'm a third year computer science student and the um, fact is I'm Spartan. So like my, the, my family comes from like that region of Greece in Sparta. So uh, fun fact. <laughs> cool. So today we're going to be talking a little bit more about, we have, about the front end. We're going to be going over some JavaScript concepts that are really important to know when you're developing a React application. We're also going to be recapping some of the React uh, concepts we talked about last time. And we're going to be talking about some new React concepts, including requests and uh, how to make API requests from our front end so we can grab data and display it in our app. Then we're going to be taking some questions, Kahoot, and finally we're going to be creating another React app. So let's get started. Yeah, so uh, like Chris mentioned earlier, there are quite a few Java scripts that you would really want to know when it comes to developing for the front end. And the first one of these is functions, right? Like, uh, I mean, most people know like functions are pieces of code that we use to return values or compute something for us. Like in this example, they could be returning like a value multiplied by two. It could be returning some strings, doing some logic, whatever you needed to do. And in React, especially, um, you can use functions to represent components just like you might use a class. As long as a function returns JSX, then it's also a component. And like most other things, we can nest functions as we need to. Um, you can create a small function to do a little task inside a bigger one. In this example here, we can, um, we have functions inside a function component, does a small task for us, and then it gets used by the outer function. And another th important thing to keep in mind when we're using uh, functions is that when you nest a function inside another one, the one that's defined inside the function can't really share any of its um, information to the external function unless you return that information specifically. And finally, um, I don't know if you've taken fundies, but in that, um, in Racket, we can use functions as a data type. And that same concept uh, also works here in JavaScript. We can assign a function to a variable, just like you might assign like a string or an integer. And then we can then pass that around, use that as an argument for other functions, just like we would use any uh, normal variable. And then another important thing that you'd want to know in JavaScript, especially working with React and APIs are objects. And in JavaScript, we represent objects using key value pairs, kind of like a dictionary in Python or a hash map in Java. And like you might assume the key is like the name of the specific um, object uh, value. And then of course the value is the actual um, data that you've associated with that key. And you'll typically use objects a lot when you're making API calls. And then of course, um, as if you're working with classes, we can directly modify um, values in an object. You can store um, any type of primitive value, integers, Boolean strings. You can even store your own objects, other objects and arrays as you need. And yeah, and also we'll do a quick overview of some other stuff in React that you might want to know. All right. So, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> hey guys, I'll be taking over uh, the React review here. 
Um, so yeah, thank you, Arvind, for that. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So uh, the first concept that we want to review here is JSX. Uh, so basically, it's a syntax extension for React. That's what differentiates React from normal JavaScript. And it allows us to write uh, HTML style um, code in our, in our JavaScript directly in there. Um, so we can add you know any HTML tag we want. And then we can also add our own uh, components in that same style. And that sort of allows us to logically arrange our um, code and have it rendered on the page. And so is up next is the, is the second concept, which is components. And so this is a extremely important, um, central to React. This is a very important concept. And it basically um, does the same job as classes do uh, in Java. Um, for those of you who've taken Fundies 2 and OOD, basically it allows us to compartmentalize functionality into separate uh, reusable modular pieces. Um, and so, you know, why use components? To prevent, it's the same reason we would use classes or helper methods uh, to prevent code duplication and then split our app up into easier, into pieces for easier development. And so basically a component in React is a function that takes as input uh, a set of props, which is short for properties, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. And it returns JSX code, um, which renders onto the web page. And uh, up next is state. So in our components, we can keep track of state. Um, so this would be like creating an instance variable um, in a class in Java. Um, so you can have a variable assign values to it as, as stuff changes in your component. Um, and that allows you for, um, yeah, changing the way the component renders over time. And this is, as it says, this is one of the best features of React because it allows um, your components to do a lot more things than just uh, normal components that don't have state. And up next is props. So as I said before, this is short for properties. And basically um, it's a, just a set of parameters that are taken into your component. Um, and so, yeah, it allows you to pass values into, com into components and a to-do list. So yeah, here's the example is as a, a to-do list component keeps track of items in state, renders list of to-do item components, which in turn take in text as a prop. So a to-do item would be something that renders some styled text and that text that it renders in some styled way would be given to it as a prop. All right, and now we're gonna look at some new stuff, React effects and API calls. So first up, this is a big one, um, the React effect hook. Um, give it is given, it's a function that's given to us by React um, and it lets our components perform side effects. So by default, so in, in the example on the right here, um, by default, this use effect executes whatever code is inside that function um, every time the component renders. And so the component will re-render if its props or its state change. Um, and you know this be this behavior is desirable in some cases. You want to have something execute every time um, a component re-renders, and then you can also control it um, with more granularity by specifying a second parameter to this use effect function, it, which is an array of they're called dependencies. And if you leave the array empty, that means that there's no dependencies. So um, the use effect will only execute the code when the component. Uh, renders for the first time because it doesn't depend on anything else to change. And then so uh, just to clarify what I mean by dependencies. So like, let's say we have a variable here um, and it changes and we want use effect to depend on that change. We can pass that variable into the dependencies array and the use effect will execute again when every time that variable changes. And um, so that, that was a lot. Um, and so be sure to ask questions if you have them in the question section or in the breakout rooms. And I'm gonna hand it over to Arvind for API calls. 
Thank you, Sam. So API calls are a really important topic, like more or less, regardless of what you're doing in computer science or web development, you're probably going to run into these at some point. And essentially what we want to do with API calls is say you have some kind of data that you need to know, but you don't have it on hand. You might, there might be a website or something else that provides you an API. And sorry, just to backtrack real quick. If you don't know what an API is, it's basically, it stands for an application um, programming interface. And what it does is it allows you, um, allows one piece of software to communicate and get data or add data to another piece of software. And back to our example, we might want to fetch data from an external web resource. And the easiest way to do that in React is using the Axios library. And what this allows us to do is we can make HTTP requests like get, post, um, put, delete, and so on to specific uh, API endpoints, which are just um, like HTTP URLs. And then what Axios then does for us is it goes to the URL we ask it to go to, and then it returns um, something called a promise. And a promise basically, as the name entails, promises that eventually it will resolve into some kind of data. And then if it's a successful API call, we have a dot then, which tells us what to do when that API call is successful. Otherwise we catch a failure and we provide some code for it to run on a case of failure. And don't worry if this is a lot, ask questions afterwards. We'll also go over it a bit more in the uh, example. And typically the flow in, in, in an API call when you're on the front end is you will provide a URL to the specific um, endpoint that you want to access for this external API. That API will do whatever it needs to do to get the data. It might access um, its own databases, communicate with something else, whatever. And then it will return data usually in the form of JSON could also be something else, XML maybe. And then finally, it returns the form of a promise and that's what your front end gets. And then you run with that logic and that data afterwards. So just to review quickly, um, functions allow us to execute code. We can nest functions inside of each other. And finally, we can um, use functions to represent components in JavaScript. And then objects in JavaScript allow us to work easier with APIs by representing data in key value pairs. And then um, the React effects uh, hook allows us to work with um, changes, especially when we make API calls and ha have an easier way to control what happens when we rerun render or specific um, variables change.